The funeral rites of the late group managing director and CEO of Access Bank PLC, Herbert Wigwe, began on Monday with a ceremony tagged Herbert Wigwe Celebrating Professional Excellence. Several dignitaries spoke at the event, including the managing directors of Access Bank in Ghana and the UK, Lagos State Governor Babajide Sonwolu, AFDB President Akimu Miyadeshina, businessman Aliko Dangote, also paid tribute to the banking icon. In an emotion-laden voice, Alaji Aliko Dangote, Africa's richest man, fought hard to hold back tears but couldn't as he led a horde of private professionals to pay tributes to the late Access Holdings Group CEO. He described Wigwe as a visionary, a perfectionist who gave so much of himself to others, but said he was partly consoled because Wigwe's transformative strides were all over the landscape. Herbert and I share a common principle of uh, perseverance, which is one of the cardinal virtues of success in business. Harry Truman, the 33rd president of uh, America from 1945 to 1953, once recounted in his memoirs that being president is like riding a tiger, and a man has to keep riding or be swallowed. A president has to be cons constantly on top of events, or if he hesitates, events will soon be on top of him. I never felt I could let up a single moment Herbert prodded me when I hesitated, gave me a nudge when I was weak, and consoled me with the words of my mentor, hanging there, who will remain, you know, he will remain unforgettable, friend, mentee, and a brother, and I feel that I'm part of the family. Bidding farewell to a brother, Menti, and a very, very loyal friend, his beloved wife, Chizova, and his son, Chizi, is an extremely arduous task for me. But I'm consoled by the fact that Herbert has run a successful race and has gone to a better place. To immortalize my beloved friend, my brother, and mentee, I have actually decided to name our major refinery and petrochemical road out of the 120 kilometer. The biggest road will be now named Herbert Wigwe. Because what I want is that after we have all gone, People will still be there, visit the refinery and they will find out who was this Herbert Wigwe. He was a man loved by all and his boundless energy and uncommon zeal resonated in a life worthy of emulation. His friends remain a template in loyalty. May the Almighty God grant him and all the departed eternal rest and give the entire Wigwe family, which I'm part of the fortitude to bear this huge loss. Herbert Uigwe, rest in peace. Thank you. Sad one there. Uh, Dr. Bati, Herbert Uigwe. We're really very sad. Uh, yesterday there was that event uh, celebrating Herbert Uigwe, uh, a legacy of uh, excellence. It was an occasion for money, but it was also an occasion uh, for celebration. And there was that huge turnout for stakeholders in business and all you know who worked with him in one capacity or the other, or who benefited uh, from his uh, genius, from his uh, impact. Uh, we had uh, you know presidents uh, who also paid tribute: uh, President Olusha Gumbasanjo, uh, President uh, uh, Tinubu by video message, uh, President Emmanuel Macron, uh, who said. Uh, uh, message uh, was read, and also President uh, Bill Clinton, you know, uh, of the United States, uh, all paid tributes. Uh, in the case of uh, President Macron, he recognized the fact that, look, this was a friend of uh, France. Uh, he was, in fact, uh, at a point, uh, president of the Nigeria-France uh, uh, Business uh, Council. And altogether, you know, uh, all the uh, presidents who spoke, 
uh, recognize his distinction, his specialness uh, with President Tinubu, underscoring the fact that Herbert Wigwe was one of those people, you know, uh, shining stars who helped to develop Nigeria and who excelled uh, in his uh, chosen uh, field. And earlier on, of course, we saw the tribute paid by uh, um, Alaji Aliko Dangote of the uh, Dangote Group, uh, who spoke uh, about friendship, about the character uh, of the man who left us uh, on February 9, and also gave personal testimony of how, I think to use an expression, how Herbert Wigge on certain occasions helped him to untie uh, certain knots, uh, and who was a good advisor uh, to him, and who supported uh, his uh, investment dreams, particularly with the, uh, with the Dangote refinery. And he now said, you know, the uh, 120 kilometer road, the bigger part of the road leading to the petrochemical and, uh, you know, petroleum refinery will be named Herbert Wigwe uh, Road. And we all listen to him, you know, uh, that this is a man whose memory uh, needs to be preserved uh, for future generations uh, to know that this was a man who pushed boundaries, a soldier of courage, a philanthropist of note, uh, you know, uh, all the statements, you know, the tributes by Elijah Ali Kodangote, uh, you know, have been published in the uh, newspapers. And then governors also uh, paid tribute to him, the governor of Lagos State, Governor Babajidi Sangolo, who, you know, uh, made a point about how uh, Herbert Wigge was a friend uh, and a colleague, himself having been a banker, you know, at a point in his career, and how Herbert Wigwe always advised him. Governor Dakwabiodu uh, was also another governor uh, who paid tribute. The governor of the uh, Central Bank, uh, Olayemi Kadoso, and then there were tributes also from ministers, uh, including the Minister of Finance and Coordinating uh, Minister of the uh, Economy, uh, Mr. Olawale uh, Edon. And then, of course, uh, you know, his close friends and partners, uh, I Mokwede, you know, with whom he founded the uh, Access Bank. And generally, of course, you know, there was uh, uh, an acknowledgement that his life may have been short, but it was a life of impact in every area of life uh, that he touched. Be it banking, having taken over uh, the uh, leadership of Access Bank in 2014, he turned it into a banking giant in Africa, and on more than one occasion, won the African Banker of the Year Awards. Uh, in education, he established the Wigwe University in his uh, hometown of uh, Isioko in uh, uh, River State. He contributed to other courses, including uh, sports under him, uh, Access Bank sponsored the uh, Lagos Marathon. He also supported the arts. The uh, Artex, you know, exhibition every year was supported by, you know, uh, Access Bank uh, under Wiggy's watch. He supported polo. He loved, uh, you know, uh, athletics and sports generally. And then, of course, the lesson to be taken from his life is that, you see, this life, uh, when a man dies, they will remember you for your good deeds. They remember you for what you have done. The example of uh, Herbert Wigwe is uh, distinguished citizenship, excellence, life of impact, friendship, you know, because uh, people will always remember. We're told that uh, he will be uh, uh, buried on uh, uh, March 9, yeah, on March 9, uh, in his hometown of uh, Isopo at the Lion of Judah Parish of the Redeemed Christian Church uh, of God uh, in that uh, town. It, it, yesterday was a night of tributes in his honor. Today, I think this morning, there's also another event where tributes will be paid uh, to uh, his wife, uh, Chizoba, and uh, his son, Chizi, uh, both of whom uh, died along with him uh, in that unfortunate incident in the United States on the February 9th. His soul, rest in peace. Very sad, very somber, but also 
if it was a projection into a world of optimism and the can-do spirit and the fearlessness Herbert left all of us with. So this morning, we will not mourn Herbert. We'll celebrate professional excellence. We'll celebrate a heart that was large enough to give to everybody. We'll celebrate a heart that was large enough to share. The tears coming down from the eyes of people yesterday just solidifies the fact that Herbert was a man that indeed put a smile on the faces of everybody. And most importantly, like Dr. Akimumi Adeshina did say, he said, apart from winning the race of life, was also really the race of heaven. And the fact that Herbert had a relationship with his maker while he was on earth, that's the essence of humanity. And really, and that's the essence of our life. So after all is said and done, if you don't have a relationship with your maker, it's time for you to think about it. Because life is but a fleeting moment. It will pass away at some point. But the relationship we have with our maker who brought us here on earth is what we will hold on to in the very end. The best of us, like John Wesley, I think, if my memory serves me right, said, is when God is with us. What we celebrated yesterday was Herbert's purpose. There are two most important days in a man's life. The day he was born, secondly, and the day he found purpose. Herbert found this many years ago in the 80s when he started off working in a capital merchant bank. But he had a purpose and he said, I wanted to stretch beyond. At some point, as the story was told yesterday, he went out to do his master's in Wales, came back, worked with GTB, and afterwards rose through the ranks. And his boss there was there yesterday, was very close to the two founders, Fala Diola, and also uh, uh, tire of blessed memories. And he and his very good friend, I, I, J. Mokwe, they decided to go it alone themselves. And they bought a bank and they started their journey. But they did not just stop at buying access. They extended towards buying all the banks, you know, Marina Bank, and they went on and on and on. And they made very many acquisitions that took access from a position of just a very small bank to a bank that is noted all around the world today. But why they did that, they impacted people, they impacted generation with their giving to charity. Polo has been talked about, the Weekway University has been talked about, and which, as Herbert envisioned, you know, should be Africa and Nigeria's direct competition and direct response to the Western universities all over the world. And one thing I can say for free is that he has sown the seed and it will continue to germinate. Today we talk about the likes of Harvard. But when John Harvard made the initial seed capital for Harvard, little did he know that was going to be a big university. And Herbert Wigwe has sown that seed. And Wigwe University will be talked of as it is the Harvard of Africa in some time soon. And he touched every aspect of life. Arts, which is the essence of humanity, did a lot of tremendous work as regards the National Theatre. Also, he did in partnership with, you know, the then CBN governor in Mephile, that was also a moving, moving uh, dynamo as regards that. Also, he affected businesses. You can see Elijah Aliko Dangote in tears because he shared a personal relationship. And something very, you know, instructive about Elijah Aliko Dangote, when I did go to his parents' house, Elijah Aliko Dangote had been there almost every day since this morning process started. And that's to show the kind of relationship that shared. Obviously, his best friend, his brother in this journey, Aikwe J. Mokwede, was unconsolable yesterday. But while he looked at Herbert's children, and he said, you know what, we'll be there, we will work with you all through the way. And that sense of optimism rang true. Herbert's story was a Lagos story, it was also a Nigerian story, as exemplified there by Governor Sowolu yesterday. Bringing his first bread into life at the island maternity to hospital, but most importantly, touching every area of Nigeria. He was friends with kings. You can see Emya Sanusi was inconsolable there. And he was friends with ordinary men. And you can see that in the account given by his driver, Tunji, that said he came to work just driving for her, but, but afterwards he's been elevated in life that he has a master's degree today. Herbert's story is that story we can all hold on to. It's a reflection of what life has to be, the journey of purpose. And when all is said and done, what will be said about you? 
The governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Mr. Laemi Cardozo, yesterday decried rising global public debt, saying borrowing remained a significant concern globally, particularly in developing nations where high debt levels were worsened by greatly restricted fiscal space and limited opportunity for concessional finance. Stating that the country's uh, sovereign profile remains stable despite near-term risk attributed to unfavorable global market conditions and increased debt burden since the COVID-19 pandemic. However, Director General of West African Institute for Financial and Economic Management, WAFM, Dr. Baba Musa warned that Nigeria was at a higher risk of debt distress given its current revenue challenges related to borrowing. Kadozo and Musa spoke at the opening of the World Bank IMF WAFM Regional Training on Medium Term Debt Strategy, MTDS, which was jointly organized by the parties. I mean, Dr. about your take on this uh, debt conundrum. Yes, okay, medium term uh, debt uh, strategy. Um, the CBN governor was represented at that event by the director of uh, monetary uh, policy. And yes, it is true that, you know, many developing uh, nations are facing, you know, challenges of borrowing and how, you know, to manage debt and, and all of that, particularly, you know, with all the headwinds that many of these developing nations face, uh, further uh, complicated by uh, COVID-19 and then recovery uh, from uh, COVID-19. But with specific reference uh, to Nigeria, Dr. Uh, Baba Musa of uh, uh, YFM made a point that yes, you know, I, uh, debt to GDP ratio for Nigeria at 37% shows that, well, uh, Nigeria is still in a favorable situation in terms of debt sustainability. But he made one point, which you know, I found instructive, which is that, look, yes, although there is still room for borrowing, when you borrow, you don't use what you borrow uh, to service debt. What you do is you use revenue to service debt. And that the major challenge that Nigeria faces is to diversify uh, the revenue base. And this is an argument, you know, that uh, we have had again and again, that Nigeria's problem is not debt, it is revenue. And hence, you know, you have to uh, raise your revenue uh, profile. And then the second point, uh, which I think has also been made again and again that we need to uh, draw attention to, and I think Mr. P2B and other economists are very fond of uh, making this point which is that, look, borrowing is not a problem. It is what you do with the borrowing. Here in Nigeria, you know, after a pattern, the Nigerian government borrows uh, heavily uh, to fund conspicuous consumption rather than to use these uh, borrowings for the purpose of uh, uh, development. So Mr. Cardoso and his team, you know, they have their job worked out for them, which is what to do about revenue, and that is not just the uh, central bank. The central bank's job is mainly management of forex, management of, uh, of uh, you know, of uh, monetary policy. But on the other side, you have the fiscal side. You know, what is missing in the Nigerian equation is a proper alignment between the monetary side and the fiscal side. And even now, with all the policies coming from uh, the, uh, the central bank, you know, the, 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 the fiscal side appears to be missing. Unless you have a proper balance, uh, you will, will not get the kind of uh, uh, stability uh, or, that we're looking for, especially as the uh, Article 4 report for 2024 uh, that the uh, IMF World Bank uh, just published. Uh, in that statement, you know, attention was being drawn to headwinds, even if we're told, okay, growth this year will be more than uh, 30%. But the point was also made that that is dependent on in, uh, improved oil uh, production and that there are challenges, headwinds, Naira, the weakness of the Naira, high inflation. So all these challenges are there. It's a cocktail of issues, uh, not just one uh, particular subject. But continually, uh, Mr. Cardoso, you know, and others in that space continue to reassure Nigerians and preach the message of optimism and confidence that the various measures that they have uh, introduced would work. But uh, again, that is about sustainability. 
It's not this kind of, this policy comes, we celebrate it and say, oh, there is an improvement, you know, within a week, and people are saying the policy is working. How do we sustain it? And how do we address some of those issues pointed out in the Article 4 report of the, of the IMF World Bank? Food security, for example, which is one of the things, you know, that that uh, report from World Bank uh, is talking about. It, somebody once said, is the economy, economy, economy. Who was that now? James Cavill, right? Yeah, it was James Cavill that said that. And that's the challenge that Nigeria faces. How to manage the economy for growth, whether from the monetary side or the fiscal side. My mom was a huge fan of Fela Kuti, hence my love for Fela also. Fela sang a song with the Kula Lubitos, where he said, Jeon Koku, Ode, Shop and Quench, what has been the problem of Nigeria is because we've had leadership that has been a Jankoku leadership. A lot of gluttony. They eat, eat, and destroy the country. 50 years ago was one of our finest hour after the Yom Kippur War happened. Crude oil price rose from $3 to $12 per barrel. Nigeria in 1970 made 200 million crude oil receipts. In the space of four years, after 74, we had made $32 billion. But what did we do with that money? Jankoku, Ode, Shopan, Quench. By 77, 78, we had eaten up all of our wealth. Olusha Gwambasojo, in fact, was quoted to have said, the problem a lot of people think is that Nigeria is a rich nation. Potentially, it might be rich. But if it doesn't harness the resource, before the end of the 70s, we were already having inflation topping about 40%. We had paid Udoji. We had gone ahead to squander our riches on foreign imports. And our reserve was about $4 billion. That's exactly what we're doing today again. The recent years, the glory days, about 10 years ago when crude oil price went so high, we have squandered all the riches, the Severin Wealth Fund, we have squandered everything, and now we are where we are today. If we do not bring about a level of decency and fiscal discipline, we will not go anywhere. The reason why we are trapped as regards revenue is because we have a mindset where we think we can eat our cake today and still have it in our hands. So whatever the IMF meets and they see, these are the problems we already know before. We've not been able to harness food security. We've not been able to harness all the factors of production. We have stifled our economy because we have leaders that are wobia. Except we stop that mindset, nothing will happen. We'll take other news making rounds this hour. President Tinubu has returned to Nigeria after concluding a two-day official visit to Qatar where he secured multi-sectoral deals. The federal government has set up Zone up public hearings across the six geopolitical zones of the country for the review of the national minimum wage. On the foreign scene, U.S. Supreme Court has handed Donald Trump a major victory, barring states from disqualifying candidates for a federal office on their constitutional provision and reversing a judicial decision that excluded him from Colorado's ballot. Haiti gangs have demanded for the resignation of Prime Minister Ariel Henry after a massive jailbreak. Apple has been hit with a $1.9 the $2 billion EU antitrust fine for preventing music streaming services from informing users of payment options outside its Apple Store, App Store. Elon Musk has been sued by former Twitter executives over 128 million unpaid severance.